We're almost there. There we go. Then you just pull up. Oh god. Yikes. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another video. Thanks for watching. Uh, today we are going to be installing some more maintenance items on the 335. Uh, if you're new to this channel, I'm building this stock turbo 335, uh, kind of for drag racing. I already have a 750 horsepower manual 135, which is a ton of fun. But I kind of want to do a budget build automatic stock turbo, uh, see if we can break into the tens with this. The reason we're doing this first before starting to do all these other mods is because once we start doing these mods, it's very common for the N54 to misfire as you start increasing the power if you don't take care of ignition coils and spark plugs first. Um, that's like first base when it comes to this stuff, so I'm just gonna get it out of the way. That way once I start bumping up the power, I'm not gonna run into problems. Cross my fingers. So in last week's video, you guys saw me walnut blast this thing, and I picked up a good amount of power from that, actually. Um, speaking of power, that drag app that we've determined is uh, rock solid for accuracy. I did a before and after zero to 60, and I wanna show you guys the results for that. Okay, so I just went ahead and opened the drag app on my iPhone here on the right. Um, I've already pre-pulled um, up one of the runs from the quarter mile where I actually went to the drag strip here. <clears throat> and I just want to do this to show you the accuracy. You'll see the quarter mile time at the drag strip was a 14.61 versus on the draggy it was a 14.64. Uh, the mile an hour on the draggy was 97.4 and the mile an hour on the actual slip was 97.17. So it's very, very close. And that's kind of what I want to emphasize for accuracy. Now if we go over to uh, 0 to 60, I did one before run here, before the walnut blast, and did a 6.13 0 to 60 before walnut blasting it. And if you look, the 0 to 10 was 0.75, so for consistency purposes, I did another one where the launch was exactly the same, 0.75, 0 to 10, so the same exact launch. Um, the only difference here was I walnut blasted the intake valves and I got that down to 5.72. So it went from 6.13 seconds for 0 to 60 down to shaving almost a half second off of that to 5.72. So that shows the difference in the walnut blasting. 0 to 60 probably isn't the best method for this, but given my timeline, that's all I could capture. In the future, I want to do 60 to 130, just because that takes the launch or tire spin out of the equation, but that requires you to get a little bit more road to hit 130 miles an hour. But that's the difference for the walnut blasting, and I want to do this type of thing for every single step of the way. So I'll do this again after the ignition coils and spark plugs that we're going to do today but this is just going to give you guys an idea of after every single mod you can expect me to show you a difference in real life performance back to today's installation video we are going to be installing bavarian auto sport uh, high performance ignition coils these are from ecs tuning uh, i got a lot of this stuff from ecs tuning so thank you for hooking it up ecs i'll have the links to everything i'm using today down in the description below so be sure to check that out if you're doing this at home but those are the ignition coils we're going to be installing and i also have some ngk two-step colder spark plugs from uh, burger motorsports as you can see i've got a bunch of their parts over here they hooked it up with some spark plugs uh, a special bmw spark plug socket tool and their newest gapping tool this is something i've never used before and i'm really excited to try it out so just stay tuned and we're gonna go ahead and get this stuff in the car. So the first step after you open the hood is gonna to be to take this whole upper cowl off. Uh, I'll show you a little bit how to do that. But um, these Burger Motorsport cowl filters are gonna be a huge plus because as you can see on my 135, I already have them installed up there and I modified the stock cowl. I cut it along these uh, strut tower bars to take this middle section out. Um, because it allows taking this 
uh, beauty cover off the engine so much quicker not having to take all these panels off up here as you can see I can't get to the back of the engine cover um, so I can't wait to get those installed on this car I'm not gonna do it this time because I want to do a separate video on it um, but those will come in real handy and again links down below for all this stuff um, but let's go ahead and get this engine cover off okay let's go ahead and get started uh, the first step is we're gonna have to remove the four bolts holding the cowl filter on I've got a little electric bit driver here um, this just speeds things up instead of using a hand ratchet. But let's go ahead and remove these eight or these four eight mil bolts. We'll just come off like that. Set it aside. Um, and then the next step is going to be removing these things. There's a couple little rubber pull tabs here. Uh, I hope you can see. So, uh, and then there's some clips on the sides of these, so you'll just kind of pop these up with your fingers, and this comes off just like that. Um, then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side here. Remove that little rubber clip. This side has a, um, a little sensor here, and you're supposed to push in with a pick. Uh, you'll see there's a little protrusion there, but um, this one's already broke, so it actually just turns out like that. But you'll see, you just wanna line up um, those things and it'll pull out like that. And we will unclip that and kinda just set it to the side. Um, and then same thing here with these clips. Um, it just pops right off. Uh, and then this thing, again, another bolt on each side. I believe that's eight or a 10 mil. Let's see if this fits on there. It does, yeah. So that's an eight mil. Go ahead and take that off. Um, I'll just set it in that so I don't lose it. Same thing here. And then this thing should pull off. Um, these can be a little tricky. Mine already uh, kinda are broken, so I think they just come off. I'm not sure. Um, but that just pulls out like that. And then there's another set of wires behind that that again just pull out <clears throat> um, so now that that's disconnected from the cowl this whole thing should just pull right off um, looks like see that's that rubber tab I was talking about we got to make sure that those are disconnected on each side and then it just pulls up and releases um, so we'll set that stuff aside uh, and now Take our little bit driver, and I believe you wanna get a five mil um, bit here, and that just goes into this engine cover, and we'll remove these bolts. Looks like I'm already missing the one in the back, but there is another one in the back there um, to go ahead and then pull this up remove this piece <clears throat> so pretty quick um, but again that's a five minute thing that you could avoid with those cowl filters up there so I'm definitely gonna do that mod in the future but now as you can see we have access to the coil packs um, and underneath those are the spark plugs so let's go ahead and get these removed all right to get these uh, coils out um, you have to pull up on each clip here you'll see you pull and then it pops the uh, electrical connector off. Um, and I've found it's easier to grab a socket extension like this to pull these out. You just kind of slip it through that hole and then use leverage to pull up on the coil and remove it. Um, that way you're avoiding pulling your finger on this or damaging it. You just stick the extension through there and pull up on it. That's how I get these out nice and quick and easy. So literally that simple. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest uh, for these other five. Alright, I've got them all removed and I've set them up there according to uh, which cylinder they came out of. And the next step is going to be to remove the spark plugs from down in there. Uh, hopefully you can see down in there, um, but if not, I'll show you guys a good look at that. Um, but we're just going to be basically 
taking the spark plug out of there um, with that special socket. Okay, so uh, this is that special burger tuning spark plug removal socket. Um, this is a lifesaver. I've had this forever. I use it on that all the time because I'm always changing plugs in that. Uh, the best part about it is it's a thin wall so it'll fit in there without rubbing on the walls like most sockets do and there's a magnet inside um, so it'll pull up the spark plug with it. Um, great tool. Uh, all you need is that same extension we used earlier to pull the coils off. Um, get it on there and make sure this is on loosen and we will thread it down into there. And it's literally just as simple as that. So we'll go ahead and get this first one removed. Take a peek at it. All right. There's a lot of threads on these. We're almost there, there we go. Then you just pull up. Oh God. Yikes. Smells like fuel hardcore. It's very black. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see this. The whole plug is kind of wet and black. Um, and it definitely smells like fuel and oil. So um, I showed in the last video, these are index seven injectors here, um, which are probably original to the car. So I'm wondering if we're gonna have to replace those with index 12s um, or if the valve cover gasket is leaking um, some oil on here, I'm not sure. Um, but either way, that is a new discovery on cylinder one. Um, I'm curious what the rest of the cylinders are gonna look like now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start labeling these and moving these over to my workbench just so we have an idea of which plug came out of which cylinder. Okay, I've got these all laid out with the first one here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the other five and get them lined up and show you guys what they look like. I just went and grabbed a uh, much longer extension here just for those back cylinders because of all the, uh, the strut bar and these wires. It does help to just get a nice long extension in here. That way you're not having to fight the wires as you can see. This just came out a lot easier than having to get my socket all the way down there. <laughs> so I have all the parts we just pulled out of the 335 set up here, uh, going from cylinder one all the way to cylinder six, uh, the stock ignition coil and spark plug. Let's take a look here. Let me focus on this. Um, so this is cylinder one, and you can, as you can see, it's very dark and wet. Uh, it smells like fuel, so I'm guessing those index sevens are leaking. Uh, when it, uh, it's kind of sitting overnight, it's leaking fuel down into the cylinder and getting the spark plug wet. This is cylinder two, a little bit less black and less wet, but still a lot of build up there. Cylinder three, very wet and black again. Cylinder four, a little bit wet and black. And then five and six aren't wet or as black um, but like if you look for example at the three prong tip here of these stock plugs these are very black um, so either a little bit of oil or a little bit of fuel or both going it down into the cylinder and we can compare um, cylinder six and cylinder one here you can see the tip the ceramic tip there is even white whereas on cylinder one it's completely coated. So, not good here. But thankfully, Burger Tuning uh, has us covered here with these new NGK gappable spark plugs. Sorry, I, I really need a new camera. Um, but these are two steps colder and great for any modified car. Um, if you're bone stock forever, this setup might be fine, but as soon as you start modding, you want these gappable plugs. Um, you will start to misfire if you use this kind of stuff. You want the high performance ignition coils and the gappable spark plugs. So you can see the difference here. Um, I'll zoom in. From the plugs we just pulled out, those three prongers are not adjustable. You cannot adjust the gap there. Where this new one, um, you can adjust the distance between the tip. So uh, you can narrow that down and where these are just kind of 
set to whatever they come from the factory. Um, so the next step is I'm gonna be using this cool new tool. I have not used this before. To my knowledge, BMS is the only vendor that has come up with this, um, but it's a manual gapping tool. So I'm gonna give this a shot and show you guys how to properly set the gap for these spark plugs. Okay, so to gap these, you will need a feeler gauge. Uh, I recommend this type right here. I'll link this down below from Amazon. Um, this is very precise because it literally is just a piece of metal that is the exact thickness we'll be needing. These circular gauges can be used, but I think they just suck. Uh, they leave a lot of margin for error when you're measuring. Um, they're not accurate at all. So if you have these, just spend a couple dollars and get a nice gauge like this. So basically, you're just measuring the gap um, between the electrode there. So if you stick this in and it has uh, room to move, that means it needs to be closed. The gap needs to be closed a little bit tighter. And I'm gonna be gapping these to uh, two hundredths of an inch, so 0 .020. Um, so I've got that stick out, and if you slide it in there, it's actually very, very close to where it needs to be. Um, usually out of the box, these are not. This one's actually right where it needs to be. Um, but I'll show you how you would use this tool because I bet with some of the other ones we'll have to close the gap. You just thread the, uh, the spark plug tip into this bottom section of the tool, just like so. And once you've got a decent uh, engagement on the threads there, uh, you'll go ahead and use this adjustment knob. So this will reduce the gap, um, not open up the gap. If you need to open up the gap, you'll have to find a different tool. Um, like for example, I have this piece where you can wedge these little pieces in between the electrode and kind of pry up on it uh, to open it, but not very precise. This is very precise for closing that gap. So you'll take your feeler gauge, which I've got here, and I've got it set to two hundredths of an inch, um, and we can go ahead and insert that in between the electrode there. And now, once that's kind of inserted, you just want to basically close that gap um, slowly but surely, and you don't have to do it with this feeler gauge inserted. I would actually recommend not to do that. That's only to check the gap. So you'll see, you'll kind of gauge how much gap is in there, and then you'll do this to tighten down the tip, just like that. Um, maybe do a little turn and then back off, and then measure the gap. So we want uh, two hundredths of an inch, and yeah, and now that's very close. See how that kind of is real tight in there. It goes in, but it's it's very tight. So I'd say that one's done. And you can kind of check your measurements by going up or down a size and making sure it doesn't fit into either of those. Um, you want it to be pretty precise. So this tool is awesome. I just used it for the first time and I'm gonna be using it a lot more, um, especially on the 135 because the, the spark plugs are very finicky in that at high power, so I want them to be precise. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the other five in, uh, spark plugs here with this tool and get them gapped correctly and then install them into the car. So as you can see on the right I have the old stuff and on the left I have the new stuff. Uh, we're gonna get this stuff thrown into the car in a second. But again, I just wanted to remind you guys, all the spark plug stuff, BMS is your go-to there. Um, they got the spark plugs for modified N54s. They have this awesome gapping tool along with the removal tool to get them out of the car. Um, and then the coils I have here, these are from ECS Tuning. So I'm excited about these. If you guys are wanting to stick with a stock style coil, which is easy because it's just plug and play, drop right in, no coding, no wiring needed. Um, these high performance ignition coils should be better than the stock coils themselves. Um, they look like really high quality. I'm excited to test them out. Uh, as you can see, the bottoms, they're already coated in dielectric grease, which is awesome. Saves me some time um, because basically the spark plug will go up into there and uh, the dielectric grease prevents the spark from traveling through the ceramic part of the spark plug. Um, so these are awesome. Again, ECS tuning for that and burger tuning for the rest of this stuff. But let's go ahead and get this stuff thrown into the car. These spark plugs are ready to go in. So again, magnetic spark plug socket tool coming in handy. You will just insert the spark plug there. Uh, and then again, drop the extension down into the cylinder hole. And you'll want to hand tighten these um, 
all the way until it starts getting a little bit tough. And then the right way to do it, I'll show you guys here, is to use a torque wrench. So um, this is hand tight. I've got my torque wrench here. Uh, the proper torque spec for these is 17 foot pounds. So I already have this set to 17 foot pounds. And we will just go ahead and attach the torque wrench and tighten this until you hear a click. Okay, so that is tight then at 17 foot pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench, um, just want to get that nice and hand tight. Do not over tighten it. Um, but that is basically it. So once you uh, have that, this tool will pull right out then. The plug will stay in there. And we'll grab one of these new ignition coils and kind of just drop that right down in there as well. Um, push it until it secures nice and tight. You will see um, there's a spot. These, are, these have to be angled correctly. Um, like for example, you can see here, this opening right here is where this part goes. Um, so once that's nice and tight, push that down in there, push the plug on like that, and to suck it in, you just push down on this tab, and it's all ready to go. So cylinder one is done. It's the same process all the way back, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put these other five in. Basically, installation is the same as removal, so once you've got all that done, you will just put the call back together like we talked about at the beginning, and this should be ready to rock. So I'm gonna put those in, and uh, I'll fire up the car so we can see kind of an after effect just to make sure it's nice and smooth, and we'll go out and do a pull and see if we picked up any performance from these new uh, ignition coils and spark plugs. As you can see, it's all back together, and the real test is gonna be starting it up and make sure everything worked right. So let's see here. First start. Seems good to me. Uh, let's go take it for a ride and see if we got any performance back. Okay, so I've got the Draggy app up here as you can see. It's plugged in. Uh, our previous best was 5.72 for the 0 to 60. And I'm gonna see if I can shave that down at all with these new plugs and coils. Uh, let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, decent launch. Pulling hard. Not a whole lot of wheel spin. Let's see. Oh, 5.83. So we're close. We're knocking on the door. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that here uh, compared to before. It was uh, 5.71. Um, let's see if I can do one more and improve that. All right, I'm going for run number two on the draggy. I've got her all staged up. Decent launch, okay. Oh, a little bit of a lazy shift there on the one to two. Oh, I did beat it, 5.53. Uh, so I hope you guys can see that. Even with the lazy shift, uh, I think that one, because we eliminated the wheel speed from the first, or the wheel spin from the first run, uh, we were able to knock that down. That's awesome, I'm thrilled about that. So, plugs and coils are doing their job, but I can feel, I think we might have to do some Index 12 injectors soon. And that wraps up this video. Um, I wanna know what you guys thought of this one. It was a little bit different. There was some point of view stuff with the GoPro. Um, it was pretty nitty and gritty. Like, I, I went through all the details for a lot of the beginners. Some of you might have been bored. Some of you might really appreciate it. So drop a comment down below and let me know what you thought of today's video. Also, smash that like button. That helps this video show up for other people who might be interested in this stuff. And be sure to subscribe, because obviously, we've got a bunch more mods coming and you guys aren't gonna wanna miss this build. So, um, with that said, thank you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.